Hey there, it's Maria. I'm here to talk about how college ruined reading for me. So some of you might be able to relate um, that college puts a lot of pressure on you in terms of how much you're reading, right? You are learning and so you have textbook upon textbook upon textbook and you're constantly reading. I think what is it? It's like four hours outside of class for every hour in class that you're supposed to be studying and that includes reading but also studying. Um, I would say though those four years that I spent in college single-handedly wiped out my desire to read for pleasure for myself for entertainment ever again and what's sad about it is I was a voracious reader right I had the biggest appetite when it came to reading as a kid so in elementary school I had the biggest reading logs my teachers were like you need to do things other than read um, I was up to like you know 3 a.m. reading my parents would be like go to bed I'd sneak a book into my room to read that was me um, and I think it in some way school has always made reading um, more than just something that you do for fun right even in elementary school I remember we were AR readers right so I don't know if any of you out there know that or school schools still do that I don't know if it's accelerated reading I'm not quite sure but it was a system where you would read a book and depending on the size of the book um, and probably the reading level, uh, I didn't really know anything about that back then, but probably the reading level, you could go take a quiz on the test to really test your comprehension and evaluate if you're really understanding the books that you could read or the books that you were reading for that matter. So I remember racking up so many of those points where I would like buy pizza parties for my classroom or I would buy you know, things at the AR store for myself um, because I just loved reading so much. But even at that age, I realized that reading was something that um, you could do to get something if you were, you know, paying attention and comprehending it, like you could then use that to get something um, versus just doing it because you want to just read. Um, and then middle school came and went, same thing. Uh, I was really into young adult fiction, so in fantasy, a little sci-fi. Um, I may have read a few Harlequin novels that I should not have read at that age. Um, but romance really wasn't my thing, but you can't really escape it. However, moving into high school, we started having to annotate things and really look at, you know, everything that they teach you to really consciously look at, right? Themes, metaphor, allusions, um, all of things that go with reading and English and literature, which for the most part, I liked. I wouldn't say, though, that those classes were enjoyable in the way that I would read on my free time during the weekends, right? Or even after school, like those books that I read after school, Harry Potter, um, I think of all the other ones that I read. I think I might have some back here too. The Bartimaeus trilogy, um, Dark Angels, the Gemma Doyle trilogy, or Gemma, however you say it. Um, those are all things that I read because I loved them. I will say that I really appreciate, you know, high school because we were shown a lot of different genres, right? So we got to look at poetry and we got to look at um, nonfiction. I think, you know, Walden was something we read by Throw. Um, just a lot of different types of of books and, and genres. Obviously a lot of fiction, a lot of classics. I'm not gonna say there's a lot of diversity in the authors that we read, but um, they did at least introduce us to a lot of different genres. I was an AP lit, you know. I understand teaching to the test. I, there are many a times that I was like, maybe the author just wanted to say that. Maybe it has nothing to do with his, you know, deep, dark yearning for a mother he never had. I don't know. You know what I mean? But I would say that's when I kind of noticed the voracious appetite to read start to diminish. Now fast, fast forward to college four years later and the amount of books that we had to read, um, textbooks, very text heavy, as many of you may know, was a lot. And so the amount of time that I spent reading was probably the same amount of time that I was reading as a child in elementary school, which shout out to Young for being able to put in the work to be able to read for long periods of time. But the material that I was reading was very 
technical, you know, very not, there was no <laughs> joy in it. I love learning, but when I'm reading like 50 to 100 pages um, for each class every week, every two or three days, you start to one, not have free time, right? Um, if you're working and you're studying, like there really isn't free time. Um, but two, your learning habits that you need to survive those four years. And that would be skimming and knowing what you can skip and what you can't, right? Knowing what your resources are so you don't have to necessarily read um, everything, right? So that's what I started to do. I started to skip. I started to skim. Try, I started to figure out where I could, you know, not have to read everything and still get the gist and maintain the, the knowledge that I needed to to then pass these tests and be able to answer these questions in regards to comprehension. Um, and I did that, right, for four years. And no one was like, did you read all the text? Um, no. And then I remember during that time, I took an American Lit class. And girl, let me tell you, I could not, for the life of me, read these novels. I could not. Um, because skimming through a novel is a little bit different than skimming through a textbook, right? But it's kind of the same. You can kind of get the gist of the book and you can still kind of write a paper on the book by just re reading, I don't know, 75% of it, um, as long as you get from beginning to end. And I think that's what college really taught me is reading is about getting from point A to point B and maintaining the, the gist of it. You don't need to read every word verbatim, right? But you need to at least retain the gist of it so you can regurgitate it and pass a test or um, write an essay. And so that's what I learned to do. And I wanna say, I started college in like 2010, I think. Um, that by 2011, I just wasn't I wasn't reading for for myself anymore. I didn't have time, and I just didn't find it enjoyable. So I actually haven't read a book cover to cover probably until like a week ago, right? Like I I would start books, and then I would I'd be like I can't do this. I literally cannot read this because that <laughs> innate instinct in me to skip and um, just move from one thing to another has been so honed in me, especially, you know, taking how I do that to how I work as well. It's very much the same. Um, so it was really hard for me to learn how to sit and read one thing for more than like 10 minutes. It was more about completing the book getting to the end than enjoying it, right? It was like, how fast can I do this? And that also might be because of social media too, but I really liken it to college having ruined it for me. So I found that I just couldn't do it and, and reading books like that or not. It's not enjoyable to me um, because it doesn't seem like reading for the reasons that I used to love to read, right? So, um, I don't know how you fix that. Some people, you know, get through college and they're still out here reading all these novels all the time. But let me tell you, that was not my journey at all. Um, and so here I am, 10 years later. It took 10 years to be able to come to terms with that and find a solution. So for me, that solution was audiobooks. And for the longest time, I thought audiobooks were honestly cheating because your husband going to read to you. But I found that I could sit through an audiobook, especially if the narrator is like clutch. I mean, I can sit through a whole audiobook. I take them for walks, listen to them while I'm walking. I actually listen to them while I'm running and I'm at the gym now. And so I started with, I think, autobiographies, which is such a far cry, let me tell you, such a far cry from fantasy and fiction that I was reading as a teen that maybe that's why I was enjoying it so much. It, there was no correlation between that and what I used to read. So I think I read Becoming the Educator, sorry, listen to. I listened to um, Becoming with Michelle Obama and I listened to The Education of an Idealist with Samantha Power and I think even the Bella Twins. I listened to their audi uh, autobiography. I did that for like, I don't know, a year, a year and a half. And then I switched genres and I found out that I love running to murder mysteries or psychological thrillers. Um, and that really became a staple. And as soon as I started listening to those, um, I started getting ads for fiction books everywhere. 
And I was like, well, you know, maybe I could jump in to a good fiction fantasy book right now. And that's kind of how I ended up um, reading my first novel in 10 years. And I think some of this has to do that I don't really understand what genre I'm in any, into anymore. I think um, fiction is something that is really near and dear to my heart, but it was just really hard for me to start reading it again. I think now that I'm older, trying to find um, the books that I want to read that really resonate with me now has been a challenge and maybe that's why also reading has been a little more difficult. Um, isn't that in that Taylor Swift song where she says our coming of age has come and gone and I feel I really feel that because a lot of these are coming of age novels and as much as I love young adult fiction and that's something that I have read um, forever it doesn't resonate with me quite the same way so part of this journey is really understanding like what I what I want to read how it can bring me joy um, I'm really just experimenting so I'm trying to really experiment with different genres and um, understand what I really love and so in doing that this is the book that um, started me on that journey that I actually finished it's the first book that I have finished I think cover to cover in 10 years um, and I was pleasantly surprised. I wasn't sure if I was going to read this book um, just because I was like, is that something? Is that young adult? Is that not for me? Can I read young adult? Is that like, you know, these coming of age novels? And so I have been hot on this, but I'm glad I picked it up. It was a good, it was a quick read, an easy read. Um, it was a series that has like one, two, three, four, five, five books in it. Um, and I literally devoured this book. I stayed up, I think, I think I did it in two days, um, just because I have to work full time. So I couldn't just stay up all night, but I, it was the first time I had stayed up with a book until like 2 a.m. Um, work be damned, um, to really see what would happen. And as soon as I finished it, I was honestly on to the next. Um, now, I will say it took a very concerted effort for me not to skip certain pieces of it. Fast forward to now, that's why I'm here. Um, I thought, hey, we're in the middle of just a crazy world right now. So why not learn how to get back to something that I really enjoy? And so I'm here just trying to figure out different things that I used to love that have kind of fallen off the radar for me um, and how I can get back those feelings of just enjoyment. So I thought I would create this channel and have you guys follow along with me as I learn how to love, fall in love with something that I once didn't think I could live without. So yeah, so if you're ready to come along on a journey with me, um... I would be glad to have you. Um, you know, it's always good to have fellow bookworms out there, people who love to read, to really, you know, give you ideas. One, for what you should read, because clearly right now I have no idea. Two, um, really just to talk about different books. So uh, what I'm going to be doing in October, I have this book here that I'm currently really excited for called, oh, called Classic Horror Tales. So... Um, there are, let's see how many in here, Oof. I think 28 classic horror tales and they're like between 5 pages to 10 pages long, which I think is perfect for me to read one a day um, during the spooky season, Halloween. Um, so from October 1st to October 30th, I'm going to try and read at least one of those every day during that month. Um, to really get back into reading because they're little short stories and I'm really excited for that. So you can follow me on Instagram to see which one I'm reading for that day. Maybe I'll do a little excerpt. I don't know. The Telltale Heart I think is the first one and I'm really stoked about that. But yeah, so that's it. Um, that's me. So that is me in a nutshell and how college ruined reading for me.